when I'm in Windows, I'm in PowerShell using it because it gives me so much power. <laughs> but man, I gotta tell you, PowerShell looks really ugly and it needs to be fixed. But more than that, PowerShell commands are extremely convoluted and it's almost like the Microsoft devs were on drugs when they wrote it. But you go to like Mac or Linux and you start using their terminal uh, to do things and it's just intuitive and smart. Uh, but it's not to say PowerShell can't be like that. And that's what I made a PowerShell profile project for. But let's get on the desktop. I wanna show you, one, it makes PowerShell look good, but two, it actually adds a whole bunch of aliases. So instead of doing like an invoke dash web request dash uh, URI and all this other business that PowerShell has going on, you could just do like a wget, as you should do. Like Microsoft, why is this? Why am I the one to create what you should be doing? But I digress. Let's get on the desktop and look at it. Okay, this is my PowerShell and PowerShell has some really cool features to basically make it not suck <laughs> because by stock defaults, PowerShell is pretty awful, even with the new like Windows terminal. But if we go to profile, just like this, just type in this variable, it'll actually show you the profile for your PowerShell. Now in typical Microsoft fashion, they do try to confuse you because if you're using uh, PowerShell 5, which was the standard in Windows 10, uh, this profile is actually going to be under, uh, I think it's just regular PowerShell, it documents PowerShell. And then if you're using PowerShell 7, uh, it's going to be under Windows PowerShell. They, they forget the path they use or can't be bothered to look it up between versions, but it, it it's it's here and you just have to use this variable and it always remembers the proper path name. That's why I, you always want to get in the habit of using this variable because Microsoft apparently doesn't even know this variable exists, even though they're the ones that created it. Ah, uh, Microsoft, you stay classy. All right, sorry. Not, this is not going to be a Microsoft bash session. Although if they would just use bash, it would be so much better. But regardless, we can open up this command right here. Well, let's just vim into it. And we're gonna grab all of that file. We'll paste that over. And let's take a look at what we have here. It's a bunch of template profiles. Obviously I took this uh, from online. There's a GitHub gist from Tim that I based this off of. Tim made a bunch of Linux-esque commands and made aliases for them so we can have some sanity in our PowerShell. So getting down into the variables this script does, uh, let's start with DIRs. This is a really nice function and we're just gonna go DIRs. And you can see what this does is it runs a DIR recursively. So as we're uh, going through this, it says, hey, here's a listing of everything in this directory and all the corresponding directories. So directories, <laughs> plural, pretty, pretty simplistic. Moving back, here's admin. This should elevate your current prompt into an administrator prompt. Another alias we have is su and sudo. These basically just relaunch into uh, run the ad, ad, admin command or the admin function up here that relaunches PowerShell as admin. Edit profile, this actually just grabs and edits the actual profile command. This is this file that we're actually looking at. And then we get into some fun variables. Now I've been using a lot of Vim and, or actually I've been using NeoVim a lot lately. So I always have been typing Vim and I just made an alias to switch that to NeoVim when I type Vim. Uh, I did a function LL. Now in Linux and NIX systems, this usually means long listing. There is no real long listing command in Windows because everything's a long list by default. So when we're in over here and we do ls, that's a long listing. There's no such thing as a short listing, but if we do an ll, you'll notice it's basically excluding all the folders. So I still have this command mainly because I love ll from, from Linux and I'm so used to typing it. I wanted to alias it to something and aliasing it to just show files is a way to utilize that already existing really shorthand uh, that a lot of times I'm just like, hey, what are the files here? I need to grab these files and I don't want to show all the directories. 
LL can be nice for that. That's why I made that alias. Uh, but otherwise, just LS is what you want to do. Or DIR, uh, just to show that. And we've already done DRS, which does it uh, recursively. And then we have some more personal preferences. These are things you want to change if you're going to use this profile. G, basically just CDs over into home GitHub. So anytime I type G, it'll go ahead and throw it over to my GitHub directory. And then I have some uh, really basic commands. Most people will also want to change these uh, as these are just basic commits and also uh, commits and pushes in GitHub if, you, if you're into using GitHub from the command line, which most people are. We have git public ID, IP. This just grabs our external IP. Uptime, also very good. Reload profile is nice for just reloading profiles. I, <laughs> a lot of times I'll be making changes in my PowerShell profile, and you probably will too. Uh, a reload dash profile makes it so I don't have to quit out, relaunch, and all that business. Find file. This is nice because the find file feature in Windows is there, and you can actually see it right here, which is a basic LS. We're doing a recursive, so it's grabbing everything that's in the current directory and any subdirectory. It's filtering it by the name from the find file. Uh, and then it just silently continues so you don't get a bunch of error messages in there. And then it places it all here and echoes it out. So it makes it very easy to search for something. Uh, let's go ahead and just show you an example. So let's say I wanted to find everything that was edge in here. So let's go find file edge and then it would spit out oh, okay we have edge.bat in our root directory here we have edge underscore removal you notice it's not case sensitive by by defaults because most people sometimes i don't know if it's case sensitive just give me everything and then you can see it's also in the win util directory that's local to this one as well so you can see all these files it makes find finding files in powershell much more useful a lot faster than using like, let's say Windows search from Windows Explorer that does this long spooling and hits Windows indexer. This doesn't do any of that. It's it's very, very quick. Unzip, um, I actually changed this alias up from what was here. Uh, I like to just unzip whatever it was in the current directory. So it wouldn't even prompt you for anything. It just says, hey, grab that zip file, unpack it directly in the directory it's in. Uh, so as long as you understand that syntax, you're just going unzip this zip, and it'll just spit out whatever's in that zip directly in the directory you're in. Uh, grep is used a lot. <laughs> so this one, it still requires two variables. What that looks like is you would grep a command and then only spit out, let's say, save files in the current uh, LS. So let's say just send save files here. So let's grep, save, and then dot for the current directory. And then it greps saved games which is kind of nice. It actually read uh, some kind of save right here inside of a file as well. So pretty powerful stuff. I love grep. It's a little bit different than find file because it's actually reading inside files as well. Touch, this is a good way to just toss a blank file somewhere. Let's say you need a blank file in a directory, you would just touch it. Same thing from Linux. DF, this is disk free in the Linux realm. It's using git volume in uh, Windows. Said, this is a find and replace, export. This actually just sets a variable. Uh, pkill, pkill is actually a really good one that you will use if you're in, in here. Let's say uh, you wanted to kill this brave process, you could go pkill brave. And you see brave is no longer running. It's a very, very easy way to kill a bunch of processes and it, it does it very quickly. Much, much better than trying to use like, let's say task manager. And pgrep, this sees if that uh, uh, process is running. So pre pgrep, brave. Okay, well, there's no brave process, but let's open it up again. Uh, yeah, whatever block. And then let's run p. Oh, look at that. We see it is running quite a few processes now. But if we do a p kill, you'll see down here in the bottom right, bottom left, bam. It's just gone again. And now if we pre-grep it, you'll see it's gone. So use those commands in junction with each other much better than, you know, trying to find something in PowerShell or if you have a stuck command to make everything look pretty on our PowerShell prompt, 
I'm using Oh My Posh, which is like Oh My ZSH uh, from the Linux realm or, or Mac realm. Uh, oh My Posh basically themes out our entire prompt. So this makes things so much better, so much easier. Let's load up our PowerShell profile from GitHub. There's a setup.ps1 uh, right here. And what I'm doing is grabbing the profile from this repository. I encourage you to fork it, make it your own. Uh, but basically we're just outputting this profile into our current profile. That's what this setup script does. But there's only one extra thing you need to do, and it's this co font, this nerd font. Now you can do this all manually by going through the web. I encourage you just to use the script because, well, it's PowerShell, it's CLI, it's gonna make your life a little easier once you understand all these things. And if you hit downloads, uh, I'm using the Cove script, which is actually right here, Cascadia Cove. I butchered that, I'm sure. But basically we're downloading and installing those fonts. So when we go into our PowerShell prompt, let's come over into GitHub and we'll just go in PowerShell profile because I've cloned this entire GitHub repository. Uh, let's see what listing, we, you can see we already downloaded this cove.exe and extracted all these TTF files. Those are all font files. But let's say we wanted to remove star.ttf and we wanna remove cove.zip Let's do a listing again. You can see we only have these files. Uh, so if we run setup.ps1, it's installing oh my posh, grabbing that co font, putting it all here. And if we do a listing now, you can see the cove uh, zip files there. So we could just do unzip cove and then do a listing again. And now we have all those fonts there and we could install them directly. Uh, Easiest way to get to your current directory, Explorer, which is the file explorer we're using, and then dot, which means the current directory. And then you could do it manually from Explorer and just go install. So this kind of uses uh, a combination of the two. By leveraging the command line with the graphic user interface in Windows, you can really do a lot more stuff with your system and you're less trapped. So when something's missing from the GUI, you can jump to the, the CLI, or if you're more comfortable with the CLI, you can make things a, a lot better because you're just moving directly into uh, where you need to be, running all those commands and then getting out. So use them in tandem. Uh, it's very important to understand PowerShell. I think if you're a Windows user and you want to get the most from your computer, uh, using a lot of these PowerShell commands, learning PowerShell and getting comfortable with it is vital and making it first not look like crap is another thing. So if you're interested in a little more of an explainer, I also made a web article. Go check it out on christitis.com. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.